ladies and gentlemen, Mark Suman. Rifma, how's everybody doing? Good morning, restaurateurs and facility managers. I'm glad to see everyone here bright and early this morning, especially everyone was networking late last night. Taylor, thanks for showing up, I was a little worried. It's great to be in San Antonio, and I hope you're having a productive week. Again, I'm Mark Suman, National Account Rep at Duralast. I've also been a part of the RIFMA leadership class, and I'm currently on the online curriculum committee. I do see some familiar faces out here, and some new ones, so I wanted to start with a show of hands. Who here has had a re-roofing project in the last 12 months, or is currently in the process of one? Okay, I know it's early, guys, wake up. The purpose of this presentation is to help you have the confidence to plan a successful re-roofing project. And team, if we could go to the next slide here, please. Thank you. We'll be doing this by reviewing contractor selection, scope of work, the difference between a roof overlay and full tear off. And finally, we'll go over what to look for in a quote before awarding a project. You have a leak, now what? There are tens of thousands of roofing contractor businesses across the United States. So how do you find the one that's right for you? Well, you can start by reaching out to manufacturers for recommendations. After discussing your roofing needs, locations, service platforms, a manufacturer should be able to provide you with contact information for quality installers. I also recommend heavily reaching out to other RIFMA members. Most, if not all, have been involved in a roofing project. From here, it's a great time to reach out to these contractors and to begin to discuss your issues while also asking for references and photos of previous projects. References will be able to give you information that the contractor might not. Were they professional? Did they leave a mess after install or was everything cleaned up as it should be? And important for you guys, how did the contractor approach completing the work while business was still being conducted? Ask your contractor for information and photos of past projects. Now that you've found a contractor or two, they're going to want to get on site to determine the status and makeup of your current roof system. And they're also going to want to look for roof issues. What are they going to look for and why? Well, a contractor should first perform a visual inspection from the ground. From the outside, they'll be looking at the edge metal as well as how water gets off the roof. Inside your facility, they'll look to determine the location of any leaks or problem areas. Stained or, ceiling, stained or missing ceiling tiles are a great example of this. You guys ever seen those before? Once your roofer has gotten on the roof, they should be performing a core cut. A core cut is when a contractor cuts through the layers of your roof to examine a sample of your, your current roof system. Performing a core cut is essential in completing a roof survey because it allows the roofer to determine if there's any moisture present, will show the number of roof systems, and can help determine the structural integrity of the roof deck. For example, building code allows no more than two roof systems installed which we'll discuss in a little. During a core cut, your contractor should provide a picture of the cut itself, as well as one showing the cut being repaired. The next test is a pull test. A pull test ensures, helps ensure your roof meets wind load design requirements. To put it simply, this test is checking for the strength and durability of fasteners, adhesion, and deck material. Weak areas can be identified. Oh, if we could get the... Uh, Word back on there. Weak areas can be identified and custom engineering can be put together uh, for certain components like a, a gypsum deck versus a, a metal or wood deck. Next, a thorough inspection of the roof will determine any other areas of concern. Do you have drains that are clogged? Is there ponding water, which is water that remains on a roof 48 hours after rainfall? Do you have vegetation growing where it isn't supposed to be? Have you guys ever seen that before? All of these factors and more will contribute to the remaining active life, or lack thereof, on your roof system. Contractors should provide pictures of their findings, as well as recommendations that include repairs and upgrades. An inspection will also allow your contractor to identify rooftop damage or other concerns such as loose equipment and debris. Any other work requiring different trades should be identified as well. Will you need any rooftop units raised or moved? Will an electrician be required? What about the plumbing on your roof? We talked about performing a core cut a minute ago. These are extremely important when figuring out if an overlay or tear-off is required. Uh, during the inspection, your contractor will determine if an over overlay or tear-off is needed. An overlay essentially takes a new roof membrane and fastens or adheres it over the current roof system with minimal disruption to business and a quicker install. Listen guys, there's, there are cost benefits as well. A tear-off is when the, roof, when the roof system is removed down to the deck. 
This can be required for a couple of reasons. Adding a third system is, is against building code because of weight and structural concerns. Uh, there may also be a significant amount of moisture in your current insulation and it needs to be replaced. You may be wondering why you should care about the difference. Well, for one, the cost of an overlay is significantly less than that of a full tear-off. Consider that with a roof overlay, there's less waste, meaning smaller dumpster. It's going directly over your current system, meaning smaller disruption to your business. There's also a lot less material needing to be installed. Less labor, less material, typically means a lower cost. A full tear-off, while disruptive, can and will be necessary sometimes. Being that the full roof system is removed, you'll have more waste being discarded, and in turn, more labor needed. After removal of the old system, more material will be needed for the, new, for the new one to meet building code energy efficiencies, such as insulation R value, which is the measure of a material's ability to resist heat flow. Needing a full tear off can be expensive and surprising if you're not familiar with the status of your roofs. Regular roof maintenance and inspections can help reduce overall roofing costs and prevent full tear offs. We recommend roof repairs at roof repairs and maintenance as needed with scheduling inspections at least once a year. Depending on your location and weather patterns, it's ideal to have these inspections twice a year. You're gonna to wanna to have one in the spring and again in the fall. Getting eyes on your roof will confirm that your roof made it through the winter with, with little to no damage or it's ready to go and battle the, the elements again in the coming winter. One of the largest benefits of timely repairs is not allowing excess moisture in the roof system, reducing the chance of a full tear off. When we look at the scope of work included on a quote, there are specific questions you should be asking. Will the current edge metal be reused or does it need to be replaced? I mentioned drainage issues earlier. Will the new roof account for, for correcting drainage slopes is that, if that's necessary? Does your company partner with a specific manufacturer or prefer a specific product? That contractor that you picked, are they approved to install this product and what has their experience been with it? Finally. What type of warranty do you require and is it listed on the quote? Once the warranty is active, do you know if it's the contractor or manufacturer backing it? Some manufacturers void warranties for ponding water in the presence of animal fats and greases. Did you read the fine print or have the manufacturer explain what's covered? These are all questions that you should ask before, that should be answered before you make a decision. Thank you for your time this morning and I wanna end by mentioning you don't need to be an expert in roofing to ensure a successful roofing project. You just need to find someone you trust. Understanding the best practices for developing a scope of work, difference between an overlay and tear off can help you qualify contractors and ensure a seamless process to get your roof replaced. I'll be around for the rest of the show to discuss in more detail. Thanks again and enjoy the rest of the show.